Yes, yeah. Yeah, good evening all. So before I start, can everyone please confirm whether my voice is clear, whether the screen is visible or not? Yes. Yes. Fine, thank you. So yesterday we had a demo session, right? So just I'll take five, 10 minutes what I have discussed in the last class. So why Python, who can learn it? In Python real-time applications, Python features, compassion with other programming reasons why it is suddenly super popular why P python was introduced more than 30 years ago in the 1989 why all of a sudden python is suddenly super popular and uh, what is the job market of python scope of python in the coming years right so python is a general purpose programming the general purpose programming any kind of applications you can develop today by using python has got multi programming features but all the features we see in different other programmings, all the features we are going to see in Python, right? It's a high-level language. High-level language means easily understandable, supportable, can be carried from one system to other system. And machine independent it can run on all the odd ways and all the operating system interpreted language line by line execution right line by line execution which is going to make debugging easy right interpretation line by line execution user friendly programming or programmer friendly programming language which provides a simple syntaxes which provides simple syntaxes which looks like normal english statements right so as i was briefing you right So a language which is suitable for developing any kind of applications, such a language we call it as general purpose programming. Python is a general purpose programming. Any kind of applications we can develop today by using Python. It's not for a particular purpose. It's not like purpose based. So today Python is the mostly chosen or mostly used programming for implementing different domains of different high-end technologies. So I was saying, right, two types of languages, low-level languages, high-level languages. Low-level languages, right, like assembly level or machine-level language. Machine-level language means humans cannot understand, not human understandable, and they are not portable. You cannot carry from system to system. Machine dependent, they cannot run on all the odd ways and all the operating system. But high level languages like Python, that easily understandable, human understandable, looks like normal English statements. In today's session, just I was, I will be briefing you with some sample snippets of Python without any knowledge, you can easily understand as they look like normal English statements. Portable, you can carry from system to system. Machine independent can run on all the odd ways and all the operating system, right? Observe carefully, right? We have got a compilation languages and interpretation languages. What is the difference between these two? Compilation languages, examples like C language. Interpretation languages, example like Python. So compilation languages, they execute the entire code at once. They're going to execute the entire code at once. Interpretation languages execute a statement by statement. Execute statement by statement. Execute statement by statement, which makes debugging easy, right? Yes. Python has got multi programming features. I said yes. Python has got multi programming features. What all the features we see in different other programmings, all the features we are going to see in Python. Like so, procedural oriented programming features like C language, object oriented programming features like C, Java. It has got the features, scripting features. It has got scripting features like shell script. It has got modular programming features like Modula 3, 89,000.
300 inbuilt modules python has got for different domains right yes. Eighty-nine thousand three hundred inbuilt modules. Python has got it for different domains or environments, right? So whatever environment you are from, Python is providing a module. Whether you are from data science or big data or databases or operating systems or testing or networking, any background, right? Any environment, Python is providing thousands of modules. So because of this multiple programming features, we call Python as a hybrid language. And also, <clears throat> just like C language, just like C++, Java, just like Model R3, we can develop a different varieties of applications using Python modules, right? So for data science, we have got separate modules. For big data, we have got separate modules. For testing, for networking, for operating systems, for Oracle database, for MySQL database, separate module, these are the name of the modules. For SQL server, for each and every files, right? For Excel files, for CSV, comma, separated values files, JSON files, PDF files. Just by writing Python code, we can create Excel files. By writing Python code and executing, we can create PDF files, XML files. Okay. For, for all this, we have got separate modules Python is providing. So in order to write huge codings, just by using the modules, we can perform the operations. Today, I'll just give an example, right? One example of one module so that you can understand how simple writing coding in Python and even for mathematical operations, we have got math model. The name of the model itself is math for statistical operations and for generating graphs. Today, like uh, uh, I'll be showing you an example on graph also, right? You can understand without any knowledge of Python about how to generate a graph, different types of graphs, normal graphs, var graphs, histogram, scatter plots, stack plots, right? Yes. Any types of graphs you can generate, right? Python real-time applications. What kind of applications are we developing today by using Python? Python mostly used in creation of web applications. Means uh, Python. Why only Python? Because uh, Python has got a framework like Django framework. Has got a framework like Django. Yes, uh, Ritish Handa, right? Yes, we are covering this REST APIs, right? Yes, even like uh, partner applications, how we can partner applications giving request and uh, how they are interacting with this uh, applications, Python applications that is going to be covered, right? I said nearly 15 to 20 applications will be discussing, right? <clears throat> Automation applications, right? Yes. Automation applications like a data science, IoT, DevOps. So all this, uh, they take uh, Python as the implementation language, as the coding language. To implement these things, we require a language. So Python is the mostly chosen, mostly used programming for this automation applications. Right? So for data science, for all this, Java is never preferred. Python is the only preferred language for data science, machine learning, deep learning, AI. And even for big data, for huge data in petabytes of data, right? We have got technologies like Hadoop and Spark, especially Spark, very high speed processing. She uses a Python language, right? We call it as PySpark. For scientific applications, we have got a CP, scientific Python. And for numerical analysis, we have got NumPy, numerical Python. And for graphical user interface or for animations, we have got a TK Inter or PyQt, right? These are the models for game development, especially for developing games. So we got a PyGame, PyCora, are the frameworks given by Python for developing games and for 3D rendering libraries like PySoy. 
and for scheduling tasks, we have got Airflow Python is providing. And for test cases, for software development, and uh, by software developers make use of Python as the support language. And uh, for business application, Python is one of the best choice for developing e-commerce websites. Database applications, right? Python can connect with any database, like uh, any of the database, like Oracle, MySQL, available databases, right? Networking applications for network programming, especially Python providing a framework called Twisted Python. Even for web scrapping, extracting data from different websites, like Flipkart, Amazon, or any other sites, if you want to extract data, we have got web scrapping given by Python, right? For embedded applications also, right? The most famous embedded application, Raspberry Pi, which uses Python for its computation. And CAD applications or 3D CAD applications also, Python is providing module. For audio and video applications, as part of the course, I said I'll be discussing some audio video applications, how to develop that. And computer vision for color detection, for face detection and object detections, right? And for data analysis, and for robotics, right? Robotics with Python, there is a great demand in the market. And desktop applications, single user, console applications, right? As Python is used. So in this way, many applications we are going to develop using Python. And uh, who are using Python today? Top most applications built using Python. Google. Google is one of the best example of Python web application, right? Where Google web crawling is first written in Java, first too, diffi too difficult, right? It was rewritten in Python, Yahoo, 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 YouTube, YouTube using Python for its video sharing service, Uber, Uber pricing algorithm implemented using Python and machine learning, right? And Instagram is built by using Python. Instagram, the prime reason for Instagram for choosing Python is Python practicality and hybrid features. NASA using Python for its research and development activities because of Python multi-programming features where Python can be used accordingly, like in your scripting, uh, procedure-oriented, object-oriented, right? Quora, Quora, Reddit, Pinterest are some examples, right, where uh, Python is used for developing this Dropbox. The most, the popular OTT platform, the popular OTT platform like Netflix using Python for its security automation and for subscription related. MMOG, massively multiplayer online games using Python, right? And Maya, a powerful 3D animation which uses Python script. iRobot for military and commercial operations. And hardware testing, right? Companies like IBM, Seagate, Qualcomm, all these, they are using Python for hardware testing purpose. And uh, reasons which makes Python suddenly super popular means most of the programmers, developers are attracted towards Python, migrating towards Python because of its very less coding. And also like simple syntaxes, which looks like normal English statements. Interactive mode given by Python, we can easily interact each and every state for each and every statement we are going to get response from Python. We can interact with Python for every statement it gives response. Multi programming features, multi programming features, right? Yes. But all the features we got in different other programmings, all the features we see here in Python. Wide varieties of applications. Just now I just briefed you about uh, different varieties of applications you can develop using Python. Many built-in libraries like 89,300 inbuilt modules Python has got for different environment. Okay. <clears throat> now check this, right? Now people who are from non-programming or zero programming, right? Check with this code, right? Python comparison. with other programming, right? Yes, Python compassion with other programming. Just I'll take a task. I'll take a task and I'll try to implement the task in multiple programming languages. 
can just observe how this Python statements as compared with other programming supporting wise, length wise, complex device, you can check, right? So the task is uh, accepting the two values or two numbers, accepting two values, accepting two values from the user keyboard, from the user keyboard and performing and performing addition accepting two values from the user keyboard and performing addition right so first i'll write this uh, the two major programming languages right first i'll write uh, using java later i'll come back to python right so people if you have got knowledge in java just go to the following code for java import java dot io dot star right every statement should end with semicolon in java so every everything should be within the class class sample and uh, public static wide main s string ox Throw IO exception, input stream reader, right? No input stream reader. Input stream reader, R capital, system dot in. Statement ends with semicolon and next a buffered reader. Buffered reader br equal to new buffered reader. Okay. System dot out dot print ln. System dot out dot print ln. This is the coding in Java, right? I'm right. Enter the first number. So enter the first number, whatever end number you are entering, the default taken as a string type. So br dot read line, right? Statement ends with semicolon. Later converting to integer. To perform addition, I should convert this to integer, right? So I'm saying int i, saying by using a integer dot integer dot parse int integer dot parse int of s1 right so finally again these three lines i'm repeating for the second number also enter the second number taken as a string format later converted to integer format enter the second number string s2 br dot read line into j integer dot parse int of s2 and finally saying right system dot out dot print ln print ln right finally saying i plus j fine okay <clears throat> so just i'll copy this to a separate notepad file i'll just show you the this i'll take a minute in showing you the execution in both java and python you can just observe it how simple the python statements I'm copying this Java code to a separate notepad file. Okay. Now I'll save it. Control S. So I'm creating a separate folder. I'm sub creating a separate folder right here. Okay. I'm creating Python 7 p.m. batch. Python 7 p.m. batch, right? Yes, just I'm opening this. 
Okay, in this I'm saving it as sample dot Java. Now just check this at the bottom search panel. I'm typing CMD. The bottom search panel, I'm typing CMD going to the command prompt. Just come out of this existing path by saying CD slash. Now change your directory, change your to Python 7 pm. Java C sample dot Java. If any errors are there, it will display the errors. If there, yes, one error. So what is that? Buffered reader equal to new buffered reader. Okay. Double R. Double R, right? Buffered reader equal to new buffered reader. Again, I'm executing it. Up arrow. No error, no? No error. Java sample. We'll ask enter first number 10. Enter second number 20. Some is that, right? That's fine. So observe here, right? I don't know how many of you have understood this code. This is the Java code, not Python code, right? So here, every statement, in every statement, you can see a complex word. What is class? What is public? See, if you're new to the programming, doesn't know any programming knowledge, right? It looks very complex to understand this. What is public static white main? What is throws IO exception? Even if you have got knowledge on C language also, still you won't be able to understand what is this input stream reader, buffered reader, what is read line, what is integer.parseint, br.readline. In every statement, you see some complex word. And the two, you see the code, 10 to 12 lines. Just to take two numbers and performing addition, you have written the code in 10 to 12 lines. Even you can use scanner classes also for this instead of input stream reader. Uh, I'll write the same code in Python, not more than three lines, not even one fourth coding. Just I'll write the same task I'll implement in Python, not more than three lines. You can just check this, right? Mm. File, new file. So I want two numbers, X and Y. Hmm. How to provide the value for X? Through input function. Enter value of, enter value of X. I said the Python statements will looks like normal English statements. You won't see a complex word at all. Enter the value of Y. Whatever value you enter, that value will be taken by X. That value will be taken by y print x plus y that's it this is the coding in python for the same task what we have seen right in java this is the coding in python not only like uh, java if even if you take c language also right as compared with c language even this code of python you just observe it inputting the value for x in the first line inputting the value of y in the second line print x plus y now, do you see any complex word here? Normal English statement, inputting the value of x, inputting the value of y, print x plus y. But here also in Python, just like Java, whatever value you are entering through keyboard, taken as a string, you need to convert to integer by saying int of. That's it. One just keep everything within the int function. So this is the code. That's it. There it. I created a separate folder, right? Python seven pm batch, right? Okay. What I'm any name dot py extension any name with dot py extension now check this run run module enter value of x 
10 enter value of y 20 sum is 30 value of x enter value of y 10 20 sum is what 30 Understood the code, everyone. How simple the Python state. Same output. Whatever Java output only you are going to get. Enter value of x or enter first number. 10, 20, sum is 30. Same addition values. This is the coding in Python, right? For the same task. I'll show you some couple of other examples that you can just check without any knowledge of Python. Are you able to understand this Python code? For example, I'm taking some group of values or list of values, right? 40, 10, 50, 20, 30, right? I got this. Print X prints the entire list as it is. List in other programming like C language, you say array of values. But here it's a list of values. I want, for example, think that I want to know the number of elements. Here only five elements are there. Assume more than 100 elements. Len of x. Len of x. Length of this x list. How much? Five. Number of elements in it, len of x, nothing but number of elements in it. I want to find the max element in this. If you have got some hundreds of elements, just say max of x. No need to write any code. If I want to find, find the min element, min of x, right? Yes. Min of x, yes. Just observe this code once, save it. Any name, how will you save any name? Dot py extension, right? Run this run run module len of x pi max of x 50 min of x 10. I want to find the sum of all this 40 plus 10 plus 50 plus 20 plus 30. How do you do? In other programming, you need to write a code for it, a looping. But here, just to say sum of x, you will get the sum of five elements or 50 elements are there, whatever it is. Sum of all these elements is 150. If I want to arrange all these elements in a particular order, in ascending order, right? Print sorted of x. That's it. No need to write any code here. Now you can see all the elements in a particular order, ascending order. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. In ascending order, you can see in a particular order. If you want in descending, right? Print the same functionality sorted of x only. You will get in ascending only again. But the ascending order, if I reverse it, you will get in descending, right? Reverse equal to true if i reverse it you will get in descending order check now you will get in descending 50 40 30 20 10 descending right five elements are there i want to add a new element of 60 to it very simple which list i want to add x list what you want to append uh, there is a method called append a new element 60 that's it append it at the end of the list, check it, print x. Print x, now you can see 60 got added at the end of the list. Yes. No need to share the videos, right? Yes, please off the videos. X dot append 60. If I want to remove an element from this X from the X list, I want to remove. What do you want to remove? 40. I want to remove 40. That's it directly. Like English statements. So remove 40 means 40 gets removed from the X list. 
which is then what is the name of the list x from the x remove 40 means 40 gets removed can you check 40 has got removed right between uh, okay okay so in this way you can perform right you can perform any kind of operations i said python supporting 89000 I want to read the 50 value from the array. How can I do it? There is a query asked, right? How can I read the element 50? I want to read the element 50 from that. First, check it. Print it. We want to read which element? 50. This 50 you want to read. So in a, in this list, this zero zero element, First element, second element, third element, fourth element. Zero index. The first it starts with zero index. If I want to, if I want to print only fifty, this is a one one right. This is zero index. This is one index. Just say x of one. X is the list. In that I want that element one. This is zeroth element, one element right. Now can you check it if I am printing fifty or not? x of 1 50 is printed or not the zeroth element first uh, first indexed second index third index fourth index index will be there right using just like array in here also yes by using index you can so i said thousands of modules python is providing right yes thousands of modules python is providing so the importance of module to understand without a uh, huge coding right? with less code you can just one commonly used module i'll just brief you for example math module i want to check what is present within the math module i want to see the directory of this math module right check it now i'm saying like that in the c drive okay Maths dot py. Check it. Run run module now. These are all the directory properties of the math module. Pi is there. Pow prod radians reminder sign sin h square root tan tan h tau right. Yes. These are all the different properties of math module. For example, there are some variables like pi. There are some variables like e. I want to print their values within the math. There is a variable like pi. Within the math module, there is a proper like variable like e. Check it. Printing that pi value and e value now. Pi value is 3.14. You know, pi value is 3.14, e value is 2.71. For example, you don't know how to use a particular functionality. For example, you don't know how to use this square root. You don't know how to use a square root. Python is going to help you. Help. Uh, help on what? Within the math module, there is SQRT. I want help on this. So just like print function, help function you can see in Python to help with a particular functionality. It is clearly saying help on built-in function, square root in module math. Square root is expecting one value x. You are supposed to provide one value, one number. If you are providing, then it returns the square root of that number, right? So just you all got the syntax, right? It is asking you to provide one number. SQRT of 16, one number I provided, it will give you the square root of that number one run module. Four, right? Square root of 16, four it has been. Similarly, any other functionality you take, POW is there. You don't know what is this POW, how to use, how to work. Just to say help, uh, you want help on what? Help on within the math, POW is there, right? Yes. Same thing you can apply for any other module like uh, data science related or big data or any modules you can apply, right? Help, you can get the help on any functionality. Uh, help on 
power help on built in function power in the module math power expecting two values x comma y if you provide two values it's clearly saying okay it will return x to the power of y this is the power symbol in python clearly it is saying in the bracket what is that x to the power of y it is saying clearly right so provide two values now print uh, uh, math dot math dot p o w of 10 comma 3 x comma y run run module what is output thousand what is output you are getting thousand okay fine so in this way you can work with any functionality you can get the directory you can get the help so for example i'll show you now how to generate a graph in python how simple generating a graph right there also we need to import a module called matplotlib for plottings right matplotlib within that we okay so pyplot we have got a built-in functionality called pyplot in the previous example if you observed every time i used math 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 in every here also instead of using this big line big name every time in my statement i will use alias name shortcut name as p or p l t i will use as p or p l t right for plotting a graph there is a function called plot function plot function okay for plotting a graph x coordinate values i'm taking as one two three as the x coordinate values list of y coordinate values also required right? randomly i'm taking some values five seven four these are set list of values x coordinates the y coordinate values that's it generating a graph now by saying plt dot show show the graph check it save it first run run module right a graph is going to be generated here now can you see here how simple generating a graph two lines code for one y coordinate is five for one y is five for two y value is seven for two seven for three it is four for three it is four right you got a solid graph in blue color you got a solid code but i doesn't want a blue color i want some different color for the graph but i doesn't want solid graph i want some dotted graph very simple right okay you want what dotted style in this way dotted style you will get now what is the color C O L O R color equal to uh, green color or red color whichever you want to specify that's it now check it run run module you will get a dotted style dotted style and that too in green color right simple right generating graphs giving colors giving uh, different styles for that a small task just i'll take five minutes more age values is there well like 30 years is there 40 years 50 years 60 years these are the age values they have got the incomes like this for 30 30 thousand for 40 40 thousand and for 50 thousand for 50 it is 35 thousand and for 60 it is 50 thousand age and income salary values are given now check it run run module a graph is generated in this way for 30 30000 for 40 40000 for 50 35000 for 60 50 but what is this 30 40 50 60 i want some label here age here what is this salaries right i want uh, salaries as the name here I want some title for it. How simple, right? Generating these things. So just check it here. Okay. PLT is what? I want X axis label. X label is a built in functionality. What is the label you want? Age I want. 
plt dot y axis label y label i want so all this i'll be discussing in brief not a worry everyone so income and title i want plt dot title what is the title sample graph yes have it run run module right can you see the labels here now age income can you see the title sample graph right so in this way instead of plot if i give bar here bar graph will be generated if i give hist here histogram will be generated if i say pie pie graph will be generated if i use scatter scatter plot in this way different types of graph will be generated we know to write huge codings here just one small example, just two minutes I take. Uh, generating other type of graph like pie graph. Same statement I'm taking. Mm. For, for example, you want to analyze how are your sales. For example, the sales of mobiles. For example, the mobile names Samsung. Name of the mobile Samsung. Vivo. Oppo just like one plus some name of the mobiles the sales are like this august the sales are like this for samsung 45 for vivo 10 for oppo 15 and for one place 30 these are the sales of august now i just want a pie graph plt dot pi p i e pi graph based on august the sales I want a pie graph based on other sales. In the output, I want labels, output names. Labels, take it as the mobile names only. That's it. Check it. PLT dot show. Do you see any complex word here? Mobile names, sales, pie graph based on other sales, labels I want show. Okay. Just check this. A pie graph with different colors. By default, you are going to see. We later I'll show you how can we specify our own colors. Can you see a pie graph now? Samsung has got more sales. Next OnePlus has got more sales. Next Oppo. Next Vivo. What are the labels here? These are the labels. Do you see any complex word here? Mobile names, sales. How are the sales and the, the pie graph based on sales labels for this show sure, right in this way you can work this at the sample so from tomorrow onwards i'll be starting with the technical parts so just today yesterday and today just i was briefing you about python the features and uh, what are that multi-programming features how the codings of python it looks in today's session and what are the applications you can create by using python who are using python top most applications built using python right right yeah. so this is the course content i'm going to discuss in brief right yes you can just check this course content with other, any other training sites we'll be discussing in brief so history applications features advantages operations editors ideas data types constants variable type conversions operators in python logical arithmetic comparison logical bitwise membership python ids in real time i'm going to show you different ids means in real time views id is right integrated development environment not on a single id i'm going to show you on multiple ids like pycharm anaconda distributions jupiter spider eclipse vs code flow control statements in python looping statements in python strings string indexing string slicing String functions, string methods, string special characters, collections in Python, list, list operations, list properties, list functions, list methods, list addresses, nested list, list modifications. Similarly, for tuple, tuple operation, sets, dictionaries, functions, different categories, different arguments, default, non default, keyword, non keyword, arbitrary, filter function, lambda function, map function reduce function modules in python different ways of importing renaming a module reloading a module package in python 
errors and exception handling, file handling in Python, working with different files, XML, CSV, JSON, and how to read, how to write, object-oriented programming concepts in brief, regular expressions module, how to extract a different data from this given data, right? Database connectivity, installation of one database, or connecting with this database, Python daytime module, OS module. So in this way, different types of modules I'll be discussing. Advanced concepts like iterators, generators, closers, decorators, GUI programming, Excel workbook, data analytics, reduction to data science, Python Pandas module in brief, NumPy numerical Python in brief, matplotlib plottings and visualizations, different types of graphs. And people who wants total like this for up to these 30 topics like Python core and advanced. And later people who wants to go for full stack Django framework, reduction to this Django framework. IDs, all the IDs, most of the IDs are free, yes, except uh, PyCharm Professional, right? It is licensed, but still how to work without a license, I'll be saying, right? How to get it with the different mail IDs. Okay, and uh, database software also, I'll show you my MySQL, right? And it's a free, what is the duration of the course? One second, I'll come back to it. So, Django framework, uh, we'll be developing applications here, web frameworks, installation of Django, project architecture, different types of files will be there, settings, admin models, .py files, Django applications, creation, Django views, templates, Django admin models, creating database concepts, advanced concepts, right? And also, you'll be provided knowledge with UI technologies like HTML in brief, CSS cascading style sheets in brief, JavaScript in brief and MySQL database. So in the yesterday session, I was briefing you, right? So about this uh, course content and this Python, Python core and Python advanced, I'm going to spend nearly 70 hours for it. So not like 45 hours course, 70 hours in brief in depth, two months duration, it will be 6,000 is the course fee for it. UI technologies, sir be discussed people who wants to, apart from this python core and advanced people who wants a full stack python full stack right ui technologies will be discussed freely for those html will be briefed css and javascript also will be briefed in the django framework i'm going to discuss with 15 to 20 applications you will be creating you will be getting the outputs one more framework i am going to discuss freely for this batch right Flask framework, one more Python framework, it's mostly used. And REST API, I'm going to discuss MySQL database and a project. From these topics two to seven, it takes 70 hours. I'm going to spend two months duration, 7,000 will be the course fee for that of frameworks. So Python 70 hours, framework 70 hours, 140 hours. So two months for Python core and advanced and uh, 70 hours, two months for this framework. Four months is the total duration. Who wants to go for full stack? 6K is the course fee for this. 7K is the course fee from this framework. But 13K is total. But if you're taking the entire full stack, uh, single payment, right? It's uh, 12K, right? So the timings of this batch, first one week or 10 days will be at 7 p.m. Later, it will be at 8 p.m. in the evening, right? Starts at 8 p.m. after one week or 10 days. So offerings will be getting each and every session, live recorded video sessions, right? Every session video, whatever I discussed, you'll be getting the recordings. Soft copy of the class notes, each and everything. Assignments and tasks. And the WhatsApp group, a WhatsApp group, right? For technical discussions, right? Yes. And mostly asked interview questions I'll be discussing, right? So this is what related to this. Tomorrow also people can attend the session same time, 7 p.m. using the same link. Yes. Tomorrow also you can, people can attend the session to see that uh, how the training is goes. From tomorrow, I'll go with uh, Python technicals, installation of Python, Python software foundation, Python versions, Python execution modes. All right. Yes, uh, assignments and tasks we'll be getting, right? Receive Ritesh, right? Daily one-hour class. So I'm making it clear about the timings before you go with the payments. 
Yes. What is the okay? Rajesh, for duration of the course for Python core and advanced, it is two months, and for the total full stack, it is four months. But still, if anybody wants to go parallelly, if he doesn't want four months, you want to complete in two or two and a half months, right? Python from Monday to Friday, and this uh, all this uh, two to seven. There are some weekend batches available, Saturday two hours, Sunday two hours, right? Where uh, this doesn't require any Python knowledge, where Python in basics where in you are attending here, here you will be attending this HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it doesn't require. Parallelly also you can attend once you got enrolled with the full stack, right? And you can see in the chart, right? You can see a big message given by the online team. Can you see a big message given by the online team? If anyone missed yesterday's session, right? can see the demo video as you can see the course content and demo video link is given you can copy that link and watch the video of yesterday session right anybody has missed that uh, payment details is provided here the contact details of the online team is provided right. yes any other queries you have got anyone the sessions will be interactive sessions for each and every statement i type you people will be responding what is the expected output, right? Okay. So if I'm done with your queries, if there are no other queries, I will sign off for now. Meet you tomorrow, same time at 7 o'clock. Everybody can attend the session tomorrow. I'll be showing the installation of Python, execution modes of Python, right? So thank you all for your time. Thank you. Meet you tomorrow. Good night.